Benjamin Higginbotham and Carrie Ann Higginbotham. Hi. With SpaceVidcast.com. Coming to you this Thursday, April 3rd at 7 p.m. live. You can join us next week at 7 p.m. live, Central Daylight Time. Every Thursday, actually. And we're going to be covering some space news, space, space information. News. Yeah. Space news! Before we get into that, I'm the space enthusiast. I've never been into space. I don't work for NASA. I don't work for Virgin Galactic. I don't work for x -Corps. Mm. If you can pick any other company, I probably don't work for them. Uh, I'm just a huge space enthusiast, dare I say, evangelist. Evangelist. Ooh. Do you, I get a pamphlet after this session? Possibly. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I, I just, I think that space travel is a fundamental to the future of humanity. We have to have it. We, we need to be doing more of it. And uh, I'm here to give you information as to why it's important and hopefully turn you into evangelist as well. Carrie Ann, on the other hand. I like Earth. Yep, not an evangelist. Firm feet firmly in the ground. No, except for those pictures of Earth from space. I like those. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. they're pretty. So my job is to turn her into an evangelist, or at least educate her and educate you as to why space travel is so incredibly important. So that's my role. And now when I start going into acronym mode and start turning into just some guy that's... I get to raise my hand and say, Huh? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> that's great. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started oh. with news. News! Space news! Space news! That's our opening. It was a graphic. It's really good. We'll have one in the future. That is awesome. All right. Right. So first, uh, the Jules Verne ATV has docked with the International Space Station, the yes. ISS. Uh, but, uh, you know, whoop-de-doo. Vehicles dock with ISS all the time. The big deal with this one is that it did it automatically. <gasps> all by itself? All by itself. Like a big boy. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, it used cameras and laser-guided control to actually figure out how to dock with the International Space Station, if you want to see that. The bottom of your screen, you've got a uh, link. Jules Verne ATV docking talks about. Uh, actually, it's it's the actual docking itself. Video of that uh, docking. We had coverage on Space Vidcast. Oh, right? so you covered it and then uh, recorded it, so people can still see it. Absolutely. So Very that's cool. the link at the bottom of your screen cool. right now. The thing, the reason this is important and why this is big space news is that we need these types of vehicles if we're going to go to Mars because we need to be able to automatically refill other ships when at Mars and we can't have someone on that ship constantly ferrying back and forth like hey I've got you know food and water and air <laughs> no sex life <laughs> that's what that means right there right I mean it's just that would just be too many people so if we can get vehicles that will automatically dock with other vehicles we can set up a Mars base like the International Space Station and have uh, supplies ferried to them without uh, any human intervention it'll just kinda come there and all of a sudden they'll have their McDonald's like Dharma drops. Exactly, just big, big, <laughs> big spaceships filled with Dharma water. Right, right. <laughs> Little parachutes. They come in wood crates. You don't really know where they came from. So, yeah, coverage on Space Vidcast. It was really cool. I'd check it out. And uh, this is kind of the next step in getting humans onto Mars. Like Virgil. Like, like Virgil. Yes, very good. But real. But real. The next one we've got is a company called Xcore, and here's their website. Xcore is a competition to Spaceship Two, and we'll be talking about or Virgin Galactic. We'll be talking about them a little bit later on in the program. They are coming out with a spaceship that will be uh, supposedly flying in 2010. Okay. Uh, they haven't built it yet, though. I was just gonna say, how far along are they? Yeah, I'm not sure how far along they are, but uh, they don't have. A, they don't, I don't believe they even have a test model yet. I think they have a rocket. Ooh. Yep, so the X-Core is kind of cool. <laughs> the X-Core is kind of cool. Here's a uh, shot of it going, uh, it's a horizontal takeoff vehicle. Well, it's not an actual shot of it. Well, you're right, this is, this is an animation. This is not real yet. It, <laughs> I was like, wait, what? It does a horizontal takeoff, really cool like that, blah, blah, blah. And then a rocket kicks in and uh, off you go up into space. And this is really cool because this is going to help the privatization of space travel. Yes. I just don't think that they're going to be able to accomplish this by 2010. No. So, it's just a lot of work and I just, I don't see it happening by then. Yeah, not so much. Yeah. Not so much. So, All right, next in the story, uh, we've got the International Space Station. They are going to be doing uh, a crew swap out. We'll have live coverage of the Soyuz rocket launching from Russia. Oh, okay. We've got a Russian rocket taking off, so we'll have live coverage of that. And then they, they're going to have some crew members uh, swap out with the International Space Station, so we'll be covering that. We'll cover the liftoff, the docking with the ISS, kind of the meet and greet with the International Space Station, and then we'll cover the landing of it as well. So just kind of... All in one fell swoop? 
Uh, not quite. I mean, one day they're going to go up, and then a couple days later they'll dock with the International Space Station. They'll be there for a little while. Then they'll undock. And unlike the shuttle, which kind of, you know, uh, just kind of goes back, you know, they well, take to show the, the belly. Yeah, yeah they exactly. Go around and they, they take a good, good old time landing the space shuttle, right? Hey, you know what? We have procedures. <laughs> we do have procedures. Okay. The Russians, they're like, you know, you're off undocked. Let's let's go. <laughs> just land. Hey, you're good. Just, just that's land. cool. That's cool, though. So, I mean, I maybe we can learn something from them. Yeah, maybe. So a few out, you know, hours after they undock, they start their uh, re-entry procedure. Very cool. Back to Earth. So Very that's cool. uh, speaking of that, the STS-124 mission, the STS being the Space Transportation System, which is our space shuttle. Yes. Um, so STS-124, which will be Space Shuttle Discovery, has been delayed. They uh, well, it was okay. So originally it was slated for June eighth. Okay. Then it got pulled back to May twenty fifth. Okay. And then they pushed it forward. To May 30th, I believe it is. Thir <gasps> is it 31 days in May? It's the last day in May. Curses! Uh, and uh, they will launch then only if absolutely everything goes to plan. 31 days in May. All right, so May 31st then. So if everything goes to plan, then they will launch. If anything goes off a little bit, then they, yeah. You did I did have my knuckles. That's great. <laughs> okay. Uh, so they may or may not launch. Uh, you know, even if they make the original date of the 8th, that'll be cool. Again, we'll have coverage of that on spacevidcast.com. They're going to be going up to, I believe it's a dual mission. I think they're uh, going up to uh, deliver the rest of the Japanese uh, uh, laboratory. It's mm -hmm. a giant laboratory, actually. The STS-123 mission, they had to leave their boom arm for checking their <laughs> underbelly. They had to leave it up there because they couldn't fit it on the next uh, shuttle mission. Really? Yep, they needed all the room for this lab. Yeah, the Japanese are like, oh, we're taking all of your cargo room. You can't have anything in there. So uh, I believe it's doing that. I think they're doing something with the Hubble telescope as well. Nice. Yep. And speaking of that, uh, and NASA, when the space shuttle program ends in 2010, there are potentially going to be up to 8,000 people who will lose their jobs. We're going to kill them? No. We're, we're just sending them into space. We're not sending them into space. Nope, they're just going to lose their jobs because we've... You say the new strong. Ah, uh, they're just going to lose their jobs. Well, maybe. No right. big deal. Right? Well, you know, you know. Right. No livelihood. Of course. No, it's uh, Space Shuttle program is ending in 2010. And in 2015, we're going to be starting the Constellation program. Okay. And the Constellation program is the replacement of the Space Shuttle, but it... Um, it's very different, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I have a feeling a lot of it's the same. So NASA kind of says, don't worry about that figure. That's probably not very accurate. Uh, we'll see what happens as we really get close to that. But it was just kind of a little bit of a bummer. That's a lot of people that get affected by... Uh, yeah, but they know now, right? Yeah, I believe... Uh, but the press really... I just... There was a link on this... If, if, they, if they don't know, they should watch this show, and then they'll know. Monster... Dot com. <laughs> that that would be my suggestion right there. And uh, thank you to Fox814 for sending that particular story in. So uh, we're going to be talking about Virgin Galactic. Yes. We're going to be showing a little video as to uh, what Spaceship 2 is. And we'll be doing that right after this. <laughs> 